Welcome back, my friends and fellow gamers. I'm Wrath, and we're back today in Hellion. This is episode one of season two of our Return to Hellion series. So, as you can see, we are now running in version 0 0.3.0. Uh, I'm no longer part of the testing squad because they shuffled the deck and I did not make the cut, so I'm back to playing normally what is available to everybody that has the early access. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the video while I'm selecting servers because I'm going to be playing this in a multiplayer server, but I don't want to advertise which one I'm in so that it doesn't get flooded by people wanting to troll me. So. In that regard, we'll go ahead and put this together. Now, uh, a lot of things have changed since this. There's now uh, more lore and story. There's actually some quests that you have to go through. There's an initial tutorial. So we're going to go through all of that here in just a second. But first, I'm going to go ahead and cap this off so that we can begin our process. But you won't be able to see what server I'm on. All right, so we've gotten everything set up, we've selected, and we've made our character, and we're doing a fresh start. Now I'm going to skip this video because it, it doesn't generally work out for me, and we're going to get started here. So as you can see, we've got a new set of problems here. All right, so this you're, you're now in a station that's in a terminal orbit. And you'll get like a voiceover. Okay. Can anyone hear me? Um, this is Fiona Myers, first officer of Dallas. Not that that matters anymore. But if you can hear me, I need you to trust me. The station you're in is about to fall from orbit, and you don't have much time, so grab your gear and head to the command module. You should be able to call for a rescue ship. Alright, so I'm gonna talk over a lot of the vo uh, I'm gonna I'm not gonna talk over the voiceovers, because they're obviously a new uh, component. But we're going to go ahead and get through, and as you can see, we're getting through a lot of the turn off the light there. Uh, a lot of the new tutorial content, and it's, so you're seeing the questing and everything going here. Uh, let's close the helmet because it's zero pressure out here. Now there is the possibility of having other stuff in here, but I haven't found anything else. So now we're going to go ahead and open that up. Boom. And of course that gives us zero air pressure. Okay. So these door sensors are really annoying because they don't work all that well. Alright, so this has gravity, so we're going to drop in here. Alright, we're going to try and access this. Regular access codes don't work anymore. And that's my fault, sorry. But there should be a hacking tool somewhere. Just try to look around. this up. Look for anything floating around here. Gotta get used to my maneuvering here. Okay, and 
It'll take a few minutes for the ship to get there, but it will get there. It's Alcorp, after all. They're the only good thing that ever happened in Helium. Had we put them in charge, we could have probably avoided this entire mess. Anyway, head outside. Just make sure you have enough oxygen. The ship probably won't have any. Okay, so now we're heading out here to get some uh, a little bottle of disposable O2, or well, refuelable O2. Ah, come on, grab it. Okay. Alright, so now that the ship has shown up, we have a few things that we need to get done here. So the first thing is we're going to do a quick pass over the functional parts of this station to see if there are any components that we can grab. Anything else that we might have missed that can help us get started. So you want to do this quickly because the amount of time you have is limited. Not only because you have limited uh, resources in terms of oxygen, but also because you have limited time before you crash into Bether. Whoa, 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 there was something there. Oh, no, never mind. Alright. Not going to worry too much more about it. There is one other thing that I wish to check, and that is whether or not there is a RCS resource injector over here. And it looks like there is, so we're going to take that. Because again, that's a, that's a part that we can use, and so we're going to make use of it. Little, little things like that are going to help you immensely. Now, uh, I don't think I have to mention again how much, uh, one, that I suck at uh, RCS in spacesuits, but I'm okay with it in ships, but also how much uh, a little goes a long way with these things. All right, there's no air in the ship, so we don't have to worry about depressurizing anything. We can keep the door open for now. All right, so you have to check the power supply and the warp drive. Oh, wait. But to gain access, you'll have to register first. Okay. There's a security panel on the bridge. Right. So. Now we've got that. We need to power it up. We have no warp cell, though. Okay. Deploy those. There. that there for our RCS for now. Alright, so now we need to aim for these derelicts over here and search them. As usual, you want to worry about your alignment with them. And again, it looks like we're at the top of the orbit on our descent now. So we need to we need to be in all kinds of haste here. All right, we're at 2.1. I 
I got a real bad runny nose right now. Let's uh, swap out the. Oh, hold on. Swap out the sodas. Alright, so we're closing in here. Now I've searched this life support derelict a couple of times and never found anything. So I'm actually going to skip it this time around. Wait a minute. Oh. Now, you know what? I've searched it a bunch of times and never found anything. So I'm just going to go for the other one and get the things that I need now. So, one of the things that has changed is the way that you find uh, your various different station parts. So, let's roll this on its side here real quick. Uh, in the in the previous versions, you used to you know you used to find individual or a few devices uh, modules floating around independently. Now you find them in clusters that are that don't give you a clear idea of what you're actually finding, and a lot of times they'll be connected together, and you'll have to separate out the bits that you want to take, and let the rest of it go bye bye. Okay, so. There's a warp cell over there. Let's uh, flip over here because we got another oxygen tank. Okay, no other. Let's turn our light on here. There's some starting resources which we will need. Some starting rifle ammo, even though we don't have a rifle. Okay. Never very good at maneuvering around in these things. There's the warp cell we need. They start you off with a 100% one, which is always nice, because you're going to need that for a long term, but like, uh, like I said before in previous ones, you can do the, you still have the ability to do the gimmick of uh, using the, uh, the call a rescue ship functionality to get more warp cells, uh, basically an infinite supply. Now because the ships now come with only a warp cell and nothing else, not even the internal oxygen necessary to operate them, uh, you know, it is less advantageous to do it and it requires a lot of forethought and planning to actually make it work. You can still do it, but it generally is not the same kind of like lucrative process as you used to get with uh, previous builds. So they've at least tried to address that. Uh, I've actually been thinking about ways that they could do it a little bit better. Uh, but it is it is possible for them to do now to to make it less attractive to just do that completely here okay so grab that toss it in there you need to find a safe place check the nav map look for an outpost or something all right so now okay listen i know you're not a pilot or a navigator but right now right, so you have to be both 
You need to set up and execute a warp maneuver. It might look complicated at first, but you'll see. This it basically our comes out to the here. departure and arrival times until the warp line turns green. Then just point the ship in the right direction. It's not that hard once you get a hang of it. I trust you'll manage. Alright, so... In irony, because we tried to load in earlier and failed, because uh, when I tried to load in it had an accident, because of that I have two possible havens that are now available to me so I could basically double down on my resources. <laughs> no, it's the other way. So that's actually what we're going to do is that I'm going to double down okay. with that. Once you're in a stable orbit, you'll be on your own. And this is all I can do for you. Look, Halion is not what you thought it would be. Or what any of us hoped for. I can't even begin to explain how it all went wrong. I'm I'm not even sure if this if all of this is real. Or just some crazy dream that I can't wake up from. Or even if it's m my dream at all. I could very well just be imagining things. God. It's getting so hard to think. I'll focus the Una. But if there is actually someone listening to me, Search for my logs. It's all in there. You so might there's be a able discrepancy to figure out what happened. To do what I couldn't. Perhaps even find us a way out of this. This is... Or at least, I think I am. Theona Myers, First Officer of Daedalus, signing off. Alright, so in the lore of the Daedalus is the ship that came out here. Um, but there was apparently like some automation stuff that was sent out first that was supposed to prep everything for the arrival but then when the ship got here something went wrong and everybody wasn't woken up on time and so a lot of people have been sitting in cryo like us for uh, an extra long period of time And I think that that, that that message that we got, she might have been the one that, that cracked us out of our, uh, our cryo thing by setting it into a decaying orbit. So that might have been her in the, in the video that I skipped. Uh, you can go look that up. Uh, I don't know for sure, but it's worth taking a look at. <laughs> All right, so... Alrighty, so turn to face Haven and Airlock at 1.2 kilometers. flying towards the star because it's so blinding. Okay, and I can't see a dang thing here. Whoa, we're, we're way too close. Alright.
Okay, I think. Yeah, this is. There we go. We're going to get this just into position here. And then we're going to match speed. Alright, so we're going to match. And now we should be dangerously low on oxygen. So let's go ahead and use one of these here. I'll get us back 30%. I don't really like the way that they have these set up so uh, when we refill them we're gonna do it in a way that I like all right so first order of business is to get this thing put back together getting this airlock put on. Alright. Now this airlock unit also has a another one of those resource units. Okay, so standard docking port. the A port. For some reason these modules have an autocorrect on them even though I turned it off. So we're going to go ahead and start this moving into position here. So it keeps fighting me. Oh, you probably can't see it fighting me because not, you can't see me hitting my controls. Alright, so we took that. There it is. There's the, uh, the resource injector. We're not going to need that anymore in that position because we're going to be. Oops, wrong way, wrong way. We need to go. Actually, we can just go in the, the side over here. Now, there is two more of those canisters for. Uh, for refilling our uh, oxygen and nitro uh, that are in the other side there, but I'm not going to use those right now. What's on our list right now is that we need to make this place functional. Uh, and the first order of business for that is to pick up this welding tool. Come on. All right. Okay, so first order of business is to tag a new cryopod. Register, set, spawn point, confirm. Alright, so now we need to grab ourselves this welding tool. Let's go ahead and toss that on there. Unload it. And then...
That was a little bit annoying. Okay, refill that. That gives us about half a tank on that. And let's get to repairing. So we're going to need this, pretty much all of these systems to be up and operational. So we're just going to go ahead and start repairing everything now. The solar panels are going to be damaged. It's part of the, the tutorial, so you have to learn to either activate them through uh, a repair process here. So as you can see, I'm repairing them now. And you can either re you can either uh, deploy them through the power panel or like here you can forcibly extract them here and that will get them started all right that, that gives us power to operate from let's go take care of all the damage here actually let's uh, let's go back inside and follow each of these in their their required step order because some of them seem to glitch out and then you have to redo certain things Activate that generator because there's an air leak. Oh wait, actually, I can start the generator. I just need to not try to pressurize anything. All right, so, uh, ouch! Get up. Knock myself out there for a second. Okay, so before we do that, let's go ahead. Put that guy in there. That'll help us with resources. Uh, oh, there's a f potential fire. So we're going to go ahead and turn on that. And we can turn that on just to take care of the process here, but. It's not going to help us all that much here. Okay, so now it wants us to pressurize the main room, but obviously we're not going to be able to do that because there's a hull breach right here. So we're going to go ahead and repair this first. And we're going to repair the rest of the ship at the station, and then we're going to dock our other little ship here and get everything rolling here. <sighs> and once we get this done, we're going to look for that other haven. We're going to try and grab that and grab all of the resources out of it to just basically pirate our way through the day. And that'll give us a, a leg up on our start so we can focus on quests early on. Now you shouldn't actually have the second station. But again, that's going to be because of a glitch. So we're just going to make use of it.
Okay, and we got two more of these. Doesn't look like we've got any more problems here. Let's go ahead and close both of those. We'll keep running the oxygen generator here. But let's go get our ship. And let's uh let's patch in some more air. And we should give our Give our ship a name. So let's see if we can just slide this right over the side of the station here. Since we're already aligned slightly above it, let's uh, back off just a little bit so we can ensure that we have the proper space. I'm definitely out of practice with these ships, so I've got to I've got to go slower. But at least I can still do the necessary maneuvering. Let's bring this into an approach now. Very slow approach. That roll really does not work all that well. things here. docked on. So now we can go ahead and look and you can see that other haven and airlock there. That other cluster is ours. So we've got the Bether junkyard 
Gnosis ruins and another object cluster. Oh, that's us. What? Am I having like Those are a couple of derelicts. That's us. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and go after this other one here. And again, we're going to adjust our times. And now we're going to be using a lot more fuel because we've, we're dragging around these stations with us. That's why we're using a full 5% on this. Because that is, unfortunately, a lot more mass to, to haul through. So we're not going to want to keep this going the whole time. But short term, this will be useful for us. <laughs> Babies up. Anyway, this is where I'm going to end the episode. So until next time, I hope that you've enjoyed. And uh, please like and subscribe. I'm going to try and continue to do these sort of guides with the new builds. And until next time, I'm Wrath, and I'll catch you on the flip side.